Hi and welcome. I'm Jan from Jan Adams Design and today we are going to be updating this dining room by replacing these well-used and tired horizontal blinds with new and textural cafe curtains. So what we're going to do is show you. This is a do-it-yourself video. So being do-it-yourself, that means you can do this. We are going to take this blind down. People get are very intimidated when an installer comes in and puts up a blind and goes, oh, it's there permanently. No, it isn't. So I'll show you how to remove it. And it's really simple. The first thing you want to do is you want to look and see if there's a head rail. If there's a head rail, you'll see that there's little plastic clips on the top with um, possibly, this is a one inch blind, so it'll have two little things sitting on the top. And all you do is remove that. And when you remove that, you're gonna see two ends and one, both ends actually flip up. Surprise, they flip up. The reason is, is because you can remove them from that. But what I want you to do before you do that is close them and then tilt your blind into a flat position like this in order to lift it. Never, ever, ever lift a blind in a closed position. Always have it open. And what you want to do is take all of your cords and pull them. You can also give it help because this is a big blind to bring it up, go all the way to the top, and then lock to the left. Lock to the left, open to the right. Okay? Now, Here's what you do now is you lift up one little side here, bring the cord with you so you don't get tangled up. The other thing you can do is bring the wand with you and grab the center and simply tilt up and out of the other one. Gently put it down. In fact, I'm going to get it right out of the way here because we're going to be putting up cafe curtains and I do not want this in the way. Simple. Now, of course, this uh, window is a very long window, and typically you would find that there would be a center bracket in any sort of a Venetian that spans over 80 inches. But this one, this is actually part of the window, so it's vinyl that's part of the window. You never, ever want to screw into the window. So what was happening, it was resting on both of those end brackets, which can be a little iffy when you're trying to do that. But what you want to do is remove it with, you'll see sometimes there'll be screws that are up in the side or up in the ceiling. This is already in a cafe position using the mutton bar here as the divider. So all you want to do is go up and check. And whoa, it is a square screw. Guess what? That's called a Robertson that you need. And this is a Robertson number six. I call it Roberts for short makes it much more fun, you know. So girls, if your guys are talking to you about screws, all you need to do is look at which one, quickly undo it. And what happens a lot of times, especially in older houses, people are intimidated because of brackets. And what they do is they paint around them. Please don't do that. You simply remove the screw, paint, it's so nice to see that these homeowners have pride and they paint it. So they remove the hardware before they put the blind up. Good job, guys. So, but we're gonna remove that and now we're gonna move on. I'm gonna take the other one down, but that's boring so you don't need to watch that. But I'm gonna tell you what we're doing next. We are going to be replacing this Venetian with a cafe curtain, but not just any cafe curtain. We've got a hidden ring cafe curtain. I've actually shown a video on how to create hidden cafe curtains. And what I mean by that is a lot of times you'll see cafe curtains and they're hanging by the clip. I'm going to show that what we're doing is you're not going to see the clip. You're only going to see the ring and the rod. Looks a little bit more professional. And it's do it yourself. Okay, so um, what we've done here, this being a very large window, what we need is a tension bar. You can't find any other window uh, or any other rod that's going to work in here because, again, you usually need a center support. And, you know, you'll look in all the HD uh, magazines and everything else and you'll see these beautiful cafe curtains and they're on these skinny little rods and everything else. Guess what? They're mounted on the sides, they're mounted on the top, but they have definitely got a center bracket in the middle. You can't do that here, so we're using a tension rod. 
Unfortunately, or fortunately, the tension rods you are going to be using are these guys. In order to span this, this is an 80 to 120 inch tension rod. The tension rod will um, is a one inch diameter. So a one inch diameter is a little bit big, but you need it for the support. The last thing you need is it bowing in the middle. The other thing, so this is one part of it. This is another one and it joins in the center. But before you do that, you're going to want to put your rings on the rod. And when you put your rings on the rod first, and then you're going to hook up your panels. Now, just so you know, you're going to see some packages that come with 10, some packages that come with five, some packages that come with seven. I'm using four existing panels that I have converted into from a grommet style into cafe style. And I've put two panels together on this side, two panels together there so that they center open. With a center opening, that means I've got two, I've got double fullness, over double fullness on this window to give it a really luxurious look. But what you need is not five, you need seven of these rings per panel. That means we're gonna have four times seven is 28 rings. Now, because this is a large and we're using, you know, um, four panels, what I recommend is putting the rings first onto the rod. Then what you want to do is put these rods together and the rod just simply slides in like this. So they're going to read the instructions. They're really simple, but if you don't want to read, here's how you do it. There's four little screws in the um, lower end shaft and all you want to do is shrink them down a little bit just so that they can actually go on to the other side, join up all the holes and then just simply screw them all in and make sure they're tight because the last thing you want is a bow in the rod. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put the rings on and then I will show you how we're going to put the panels on. Stay with me. Welcome back. So if you notice behind me, I've actually got our cafe curtain up. This is what I call more than double fullness. It is two panels. These are 50 inch wide each joined together, which is 100 inches on this side, as well as there will be another panel. I know it looks like a tablecloth right now, but it isn't. This is the actual cafe curtain. Remember I said to you that what I was trying to show you was a cafe curtain that had a hidden key. So you notice this is the um, rings on the rod right now, and these are the clips. Typically, you're going to see a cafe curtain that is clipped right at the top. But you know what? That's not really, that's a super casual look. I wanted this to be just a little bit more chic looking. So what I did is I created um, these and this is the panels right down and on the back of this I actually created a channel that has a little lip and the little lip is measured down from the ring so when you're measuring from the ring down to the clip it's about an inch and a quarter an inch and a quarter is where I want that little edge to be so I've got it exactly at an inch and a quarter, which means that when I put the ring on, the ring clips onto that little part, and now you see it here, but guess what? When it's up, that's what you see. So you see only the ring and the rod, and it's a hidden curtain, cafe curtain. What do you think? Is that beautiful? It's very casual, textural, it's just given plus what it does is it helps in soundproofing. So if you've got a problem with sound, fabric. Anything that's fabric, carpets, etc., will help deaden sound. Blinds do not do that, but fabric does. So if you've got a uh, sound issue in your place, think fabric. So you'll probably go, well, how did you put those up? All I see is a bunch of rings. Ha, <laughs> well, I'll explain to you. Remember I said that what you want is seven 
um, of these rings per panel. So how do you figure out the easy way to figure out how to put these rings on? Here's another issue, which, you know, is called play. And if you make a mistake, guess what? You can unclip it and start again. And if you did it the um, original way, which is you take a panel and you'll notice here, this is the center of the two panels. So you're using the center of that panel and the edge of the other panel and holding it back. That becomes where your center ring is going to go. So you just simply clip your center ring onto the fabric. Okay, now you're going to have, because we have seven, you're going to be clipping them in between. But here's what happened. Not when you have two panels put together. It's not going to work. Typically, you would just divide this into thirds. You'd have two in the middle and one that would be there. But because we've got two panels put together, two of those rings would be right next to each other. So do some math, guys. All you do is you take the actual measurement of the two panels together, which is 100 inches, and you divide it by 14. 14 is the amount of rings that you've got. I know it's a little bit math, but come on, you guys can do this. Use a calculator. Then it works out to about 7.16, so seven and a quarter inches or whatever, seven and a half. And you take and measure each ring at the seven and a quarter inches or seven and a half inches from outside to inside all the way through and you will have a perfect panel as we can see here. So that's it for making cafe curtains that have got a hidden secret. Hope you enjoyed.